I just marked all the connecting rods and caps with numbers showing which cylinder these came from. I'd like to put them back where they came from just because it's a used motor that isn't getting much machining. And this is the set that I used. That's good enough. Like 15 bucks. Did its job. All right, back to the motor again. Um, this time, looks like I got two helpers with me. Chevy, he's the new guy. Ruby, she's the old one. This guy likes to eat and sniff everything. I hope he doesn't drink the oil. We'll find out. So, looking at these main bearings, and there's some what I would consider strange wear in here. Um, the rest of the motor doesn't look like it's that old, but I don't know what the deal is with the wear in these, on, on, on these, uh, on the main caps. Um, I'm no expert on the subject either, so I don't know. Maybe that's normal. I don't think it is, but feel free to leave a comment below. The, um, I'm a little concerned about the position of the uh, cam bearings. Again, I'm no expert, but just looking at the, the oil hole, I'm not seeing much concern. In fact, that one's not even really lined up with the oil galley. Um, I may just remove these, even though I really don't care much about the motor itself, because and this may be difficult to see. I'll put a light in here. But let me see if I can find the oil hole in that second bearing. Okay. So the back bearing. For the cam, the oil hole looks like it's in the, would be the top of the block, facing up. And the rest of them, I can't see from this angle. Let me see if I can feel them. Yeah. So, the oil hole for this bearing which would be the one to the third one in is neither top nor bottom. Um, same with the second. And the fourth, again, same thing. Um, I'm guessing that's maybe 12, one, two, maybe two o'clock. And that's from the bottom. So I'm not too sure that those bearings were even getting oil, which might explain the wear on the bearings themselves. Or that could even be rust. Again, this motor sat for who knows how long. And given the amount of rust that was in the cylinders, I don't know. Maybe this is some rust transfer from the cam. But the cam itself doesn't really show much rust on the bearing surfaces. Um, there's some, it looks like maybe some minor wear. I can't feel anything on some of the bearing surfaces here. Especially in the back. I don't know how well that'll show on camera, but you can see uh, somewhere. Uh, not bad enough that you can feel it, but obviously it's visible. 
same here. This light might be a little too bright. Let's see if that's any better. Regardless, I, I think the lobes have enough on them, enough meat to them, to be a salvageable cam. I thought this was rust. It looks like there's just some dirty oil. So the plan is, for now at least, just to reuse the cam. Again, i got to keep an eye on the target here, or, or the end goal, I should say. And that really is just to get this car moving in and out of the garage on its own power. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm looking to soak the pistons. Some of them just have a lot of carbon buildup. And the rings kind of look okay. Um, some of these rings, like I said before, are just completely stuck inside the, the grooves. I'll see if soaking them loosens them up any. Um, some of these are really rusted. They're obviously scored from me hammering them out. Uh, some of these pistons were in the bore so tight because of all the rust that I'm not even sure if they are completely round anymore. I mean, obviously the domes are, but, well, I shouldn't even say the domes, but the tops should obviously still be round, but the skirts, I don't know how much they got crushed while coming out. And frankly, I don't even know if it matters other than I may end up with some sort of a piston slap. Uh, as long as the motor doesn't blow itself up. And again, this, this thing won't be driven, but maybe a few miles at most. Yeah, there's somewhere on this skirt. Let's see. Yeah. I don't know if I did that or if it's just normal wear. Again, I have no idea how many miles are on this motor, what kind of condition it was in when it did run, or any of that. Doesn't really matter to me, again, for my purposes. If this was the original motor, hey, you know, it'd be a different story. I'd be looking to restore it. Take it to a machine shop, get all the surfaces resurfaced, cylinders done professionally, new pistons. I might get new pistons anyway. I've seen some gasket sets that not only come with rings, but also come with pistons. I don't know if it would be worth it at this point, but we'll see what happens after I clean them up. Crank doesn't look too bad. I don't feel any grooves, any obvious wear. There's a little scratch here. That might have been from me hammering the pistons out. Um, I've, I've seen some videos. Focus. I've seen some videos explaining how to polish these by hand. I may give that a shot to get rid of some of these. It feels to be like minor gouges. I don't know how visible that is right here. Oh, the main bearings seem okay. Main bearing surfaces. This one looks a little more worn than others, but again, nothing, well, almost begins to feel a groove in this. Let's see how the back seal is. I think this is mostly just 
Yeah, I don't really feel noticeable wear in that. <clears throat> so, I think a hand polish will be good enough for that. So next I'll be cleaning the block up, scraping off the old gaskets, try some honing, see if I get these cylinders back into at least some sort of a decent condition, see if I get some shine back on where they're pitted. Um, again, some of the pitting from the rust is pretty bad in some of these cylinders. Clean out all the oil galleys. And do all the obvious work. Um, you know, this isn't going to be a video on how to rebuild your small block by any means. There's a million videos out there. Uh, this really is just bare bones budget. How cheap can I get this thing to run? Put it back in the car. And I don't even know if the transmission works, to be honest. We'll find out, I guess, at some point. If I can get forward and reverse out of it, I'll be happy. Um, if this really did come with that motor, and again, I'll have to check out the casting numbers, but I noticed these two studs. If, if that motor really did come from, say, an 84 Firebird or a Camaro, that looks like they could be the um, the standoffs for the torque arm that ran back to the rear. So that would put it into like a, a third gen F body. Um, I grew up working on those as a teen. Kind of looks like that. This transmission looks oddly familiar shape wise. So I'll find out if that's where this came from. Uh, obviously has the detent cable, coolant lines. I don't know much about transmissions, but this does look very familiar. Wouldn't be surprised if it came with the motor and came out of a third gen F body from about 84, so maybe 85. And again, that's just based off the stamping on the front of the block. be this number here. I'll have to take a look at the casting number as well. Well this is an unexpected surprise. Let's pull the fuel pump push rod right out. It's covered in assembly lube. Not sure what that's about. Somebody did some work on this. Try to pull out these little galley plugs and drill a hole.
So pawn over two. Nope. Oh, the third one cooperated. And this is why I want to pull them out. Given the condition of oil that was in the pan, it's inevitable that there was buildup somewhere in the motor. And there's no point in cleaning everything out, putting new bearings in and everything if we're going to leave sludge like this inside. It'll just recirculate at some point, I'm sure. So, while we're here, we might as well clean it out. Try a screw with bigger thread. Try the last one. And three for three. So I picked up some brushes at Harbor Freight. They look like they might work. Let's see. Is it loose? Is it too small? Might be too big. Yep. All right, let's try the others. That's much better. These brushes obviously don't reach all the way to the back of the block. See it. I tried to put a wrench on the um, on the rear plug, but no luck. They might require heat to remove. They're in there pretty good. See these bad boys here. So I'm trying to get out these rear plugs from the oil galleys so I can clean them out. And they're just not playing well. In fact, let's see if I can get you in here closer. I cracked one of them. I don't know if you can see the crack top here. Cracked one of them trying to get it out. They're in there so well that wasn't uh that wasn't gonna work without heat. So A little bit of heat. I think we get the rest of them out.
to get it really hot, just hot enough to expand the metal a little bit around the plug. Yep, that's all we need. Now obviously that's going to be hot, so we'll just leave that sit for a little while. Try the center one again. No. Alright, let's try to heat up the center one. gives us nope. still nothing well the center one's not cooperating, so I have to try the bolt extractor. And just give ourselves a fighting chance. Give it a little juice. Well, let's see what that gives us. Still nothing. Not looking good. Nah, no good. Easy out to strip it. That's going to be hot.
Hmm. I doubt this is going to work. See if this works. So that fire was just the, uh, it's a nylock nut. It's just burning off. Making a mess in the tip of my welder. Got it nice and hot. Let that cool down a little bit. from milk. All right, let's see what happens. There we go. No? No. I thought for sure it was moving. Didn't get much of a weld on it. Let's see. Based upon where the crack is now, it looks like it might have moved. No, it's probably just the heat more than anything that got it to move. You got that pretty hot.
Either way, it's a win. Alright, those are now. Let's take these out before I forget. Well, that'll make cleaning out those passages a lot easier. All right, I'm going to try to remove these cam bearings. Handy dandy cam bearing remover installer. Try to go for the back one first. Bring it a little bit closer. See what's going on in here. I'm not going to be able to set up the tool and hold the camera at the same time. I don't think, but the key here is slide the tool in through the front or the rear. Obviously I can't come through the rear because of the engine stand. So grab this guy, line him up, put him into that last bearing, slightly tap. Now that it's seated, I should be able to drive it out. Bearings out. And getting them off the tool is a different story. You need a rag. Let's try this again. See if we can get this off. It will spin or we pull. There's an O ring on the tool that grabs the bearing. It grabs it rather well, actually. Maybe put a little oil in the next one. All 
All right, there's bearing. On to the next one. But in case you're wondering, the bearings were pretty worn. You can see some of the wear marks inside there. And I probably should have taken notice, but I'm not sure if these were put in wrong because they do have an oil hole. Check the back of the block. See where that oil hole is. Uh, it shouldn't really matter. There's several back there with a the groove. But I don't know, maybe maybe there was a clog somewhere in the in the block, but Seems like a lot of wear. Unless these were just too tight. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to mark this as having come from the back of the block. So we'll just mark this rear. to the next one. I'll put a little lube on this first. I'm just going to put a little silk and grease on the o-ring so it doesn't grab as tight. Now I'm going to flip this around. It definitely comes off easier with a little bit of lube in the end.
Yeah, this one's pretty worn too. No scratches, it just seems as if it's worn. Maybe that's even, maybe, you know, that could be a bit rust, but no, this is definitely wear. That's definitely wear. In case you're wondering what's going on in here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Mm. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to switch hands here, drop him down inside. A little challenging one-handed. Get him up inside that bearing. That's close enough. Put on the end of the tool. It should line it up. Give it a little push. Now it's lined up, ready to be driven out. Almost. There we go. Just reach in, pull it off the end of the tool. Pull it out. There we go. That's our donut. Same deal as before. Clean this oil off. Get a better grip. And just twist it off. There we go. Again, another pretty worn bearing. It's number two. Now, this front bearing, I can't get to. I really shouldn't hammer it out from the front because the other end of the tool should see at least one or two bearings away from the bearing you want to punch out. And the reason I say that is because the front, which in this case would be this end, really acts as a guide to keep the tool from doing this while you're hammering it. So, if I were to just put this in the front here like so and whack at it, there's no way I can hold that straight parallel to the board of the cam bearing. So, I won't even attempt it for fear I may drive it crooked. And 
the problem is, I don't know if you can tell from that angle, this would be better. Obviously not going to get the tool in through there, so I'll have to take it off of the stand first. Put the tool in through the back. Like so. And then I can drive it from the back to the front. This will hold me steady on the back. I'll have to flip it around though to use it, the cone because I don't have a bearing back there anymore. And I'll pop it out the front. I'm not going to do that at the moment. So there's a cam bore. Well, the bore for the cam bearing. Previously I said that my bearings, my um, cam bearings may have been in wrong, just judging by the wear. I'd assume that the hole in the bearing had to line up with a hole in the bore for the bearing, but I was wrong. Uh, there is a groove all the way around the full circumference of the bore. So this is my first time removing and replacing cam bearings. So this is kind of news to me. Um, you know, backing out. We're actually looking through the, the main cap there. So anyway, just wanted to correct myself. And I still need to take out that front bearing. 